It's more character driven and narrative driven. It's not just a vehicle for gratuitous action sequences. There's something behind those action sequences. Yeah. yeah. And then we have gratuitous action sequences. You do. We need to change people's perceptions about superheroes. And Elastigirl is our best play. Better than me? <clears throat> Bye, sweetie. I'll watch the kids, no problem. You know, in 2004, when you did the first film, I think you really set the bar. I mean, people have said one of the best contemporary superhero films. Oh, thanks. And, well, it's true. And then 14 years later, you've got this tsunami of other superhero movies out there. So where did you guys even start to go? How do we carve back our niche? I had the idea for this when we were publicizing the first film, the, the role switch part. So that was kind of in the back of my mind percolating along with a lot of other projects and things that I want to do. Uh, but uh, it actually was kind of a buzzkill when I was thinking about doing this because, you know, uh, I was going, look, these films take some time at, at best. If they move quickly, they take two years or more. Right. Mm -hmm. And aren't people going to be sick of superhero movies in two years? Because there's a lot right now. Mm -hmm. And there are even more than there was then. And I thought, uh, you know, this is going to, people, there's nothing new to, and then I thought, wait a minute, uh, it never was a superhero movie. Yeah. It was a movie right. about a family that was right. happened to be superheroes, and there's right. plenty to, to, to mine about families. Yes. And yeah. so uh, I, it actually, I, I kind of questioned it for a second, and then I remembered what got me excited about the first movie. And then it became kind of easier, just more fun, because uh, there's a lot to... Uh, say with that mix of, of family plus superhero. Yeah. yeah, it's more character driven and narrative driven. It's yeah. not just a vehicle for gratuitous action sequences. There's something behind those action sequences. Yeah, yeah. and then we have gratuitous action sequences. You do, which yeah. is amazing, which all. is so fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, I want Extra to ask, bonus. you also have this amazing uh, kind of rogues gallery of soups that we don't really get to know. We see them in the third act. Well, we actually had uh, a whole bunch that we yeah. designed. Uh, everybody came up with goofy ones, and mm -hmm. uh, I came up with some of the others. But yeah. uh, I didn't come up with Screech, but I like Screech, and oh, I yeah. thought our design was really cool. So, uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, was there one that you were like, when you're looking at them, you know their stories about all of them oh, standing there? Is yeah, there one that you have and a there favorite? were several that didn't make it that, yeah. I, that I loved. Like and there's, there's one. Well, I had one named, and he's kind of there. He's sort of there, but He's our nobody gives a name. Well, I don't know if we're thinking the same one. I hope we are. I think we are. Uh, there's one called Overthink, uh, and uh, <laughs> Who doesn't his love that? his power <laughs> was incredible mental energy, but he takes time to consider every <laughs> single thing and usually misses his opportunity to correct whatever the problem was because there's always one more angle to explore. But that so, probably serves him well, actually. He overthinks it and then somehow succeeds. That's his superpower, right? There, like, yeah, well, perhaps, by, yes. By, through it's inaction. I'll take through it. inaction, <laughs> he doesn't not screw up or does not screw me.